So how many of you have used OEmbed before? Have you, how many of you have no idea what an OEmbed is or, or anything like that? Awesome. Perfect. So we're going to kind of talk a little bit about uh, what an OEmbed is and how you can use it and then also um, some other cool stuff you can do with OEmbeds. So we're going to talk about what's an OEmbed. We're going to talk about uh, what is the embed, just a normal embed itself. We're also going to be talking about uh, how to use an embed and being able to you know, make, the, make those show up on your site. And we're going to uh, discuss uh, like how do you take these things and make them actually work. And then we're going to talk about how can you um, make your website be the embedded content on someone else's site. So what's an OEmbed? Um, if, you've, if you've used like a YouTube video and taken the YouTube video and put it on your website and then hit publish, that's an OEmbed. That's it going out and doing all the things that it needs to do in order to have it be displayed on your site. So I'm going to show you how um, we use OEmbeds on uh, my show WP Water Cooler. So here's the, uh, the, YouTube, um, the YouTube page itself. Sorry about that. There we go. So there's the uh, the YouTube page, and we're going to go down and find the the old school embed code and copy that, and then we're going to paste it onto our um, our site. And this is kind of showing you like the the old way in which people would take the YouTube content and using embeds, put them onto uh, their YouTube or put them onto their, uh, their WordPress site. So I'm gonna go into the text editor and then I'm gonna paste in that embed code. And then I go over and publish it. And then once it publishes, um, we'll go and look at the preview of the, of the page to kind of see what it ends up looking like. And you'll see that the, the page has is a very basic website. But you can see what the, uh, the embed code actually did. That's using the full size embed code um, that, that YouTube provides. Now that we kind of live in the modern age, um, we use OEmbed. So um, OEmbed.com uh, talk, talks about how OEmbeds actually work and how that kind of standard works, the way in which the, the servers communicate with each other and whatnot. I'll show you how an, uh, an OEmbed works. So this is the uh, this is the the YouTube channel. We're going to go and click on the embed code or the O embed rather, and then we're just going to go and paste it onto the uh, onto the site. And then WordPress is pretty awesome in that it automatically displays exactly what ends up happening on um, on the site. So it's not having to to show you the code or the text or anything like that. It's just showing you directly what that actual video is. So let's talk a little bit about how that technology works. So there's, you know, the, you have these two different things. You had the embed code, which had like the object and it had all of these like extra code, the HTML code around it. Then you had the OEmbed where you're just taking one of these three, yeah, one of these three up, up here and putting it onto, um, put it onto your website. So the first one's like the, the normal URL that WordPress get, or that YouTube would give you. Uh, the second one is kind of a variation of it, uh, depending on what you've clicked on and how you went about it. And then the third one is that share button that you would click on in YouTube that would give you that. So all in all, all of the, the text that's in blue is kind of showing you that like special ID code for that particular video. So when OM, how OM, OEmbeds work is that you end up with a um, consumer uh, HTTP request that it's taking the embed code, rather the, the URL that they're, you're using, and it's formatting it to give it to YouTube and saying, hey YouTube, I need an OEmbed, I need an OEmbed. Give it to me, what, what, what can you give me? And so what it does is it responds back with a JSON request. And the JSON request, um, it comes back to the WordPress site. So we go from the YouTube, video over to 
or sorry, this is from the WordPress site over to the YouTube video. And then YouTube will end up giving you that um, response back. And then the response gets sent back over to the WordPress site. So this kind of dynamic that's, that's happening here is the website says, hey, what, hey YouTube, here's my URL that I have, and it could be one of those three. YouTube says, I know what to do with that. I'm going to give you the response, you know, my response back. So here's the response that it has. And then you'll see in this area here, this is showing you the actual embed code, the old school embed code that WordPress is now going to, you know, uh, display. So I like embed codes and O-embed codes. Um, it, it's so much easier to actually take a video link and just post it in there. If you're using SoundCloud, you can go and take a SoundCloud link, just go on to SoundCloud's website, grab the link at the top of it, and paste it in there. If you're using uh, Twitter, if you're using uh, pretty much any website nowadays actually does O-embeds. Um, what I also like about it is the O-embeds can be customized by the designer or developer of the theme. So they can set it up so it's going to be a very particular resolution. They could use uh, they could use um, fonts of design to be able to have that video shrink and grow with the page if needed. So here's all the different uh, sites that are supported um, out of the box um, with WordPress. So if you're someone who likes to share stuff from uh, PolyTumor or Flickr or Hulu or Vimeo or any of these sites, um, those are all out of the box. You can just take the URL from the website, paste it right into your, your WordPress site, hit post, and you're good to go. All the magic just happens on the back end, and you don't have to worry about anything yourself. You don't have to figure out what the embed code's gonna look like or any of that sort of thing. You just, just get the URL and just put it into your blog post. So, WordPress is always adding new um, providers to, uh, to their list of like official providers that are out there. So these are the, these are the different um, versions that have come out and the ways in which they've either removed them or have added them to uh, the kind of official provider list. They've also added um, some back in uh, 4.4, 4.4.1 and 4.4.3. Uh, 4.4.3, uh, or sorry, uh, four or five, rather. Um, that one has, uh, now you can take a Twitter moment that has been um, posted, copy that and put it into your website, and now you get a nice list of all the things that happen within that particular Twitter post. So if you've done any type of audio or video stuff, you probably use this, and if you quoted anybody on Twitter, then you probably use this as well and didn't even notice it. You just put it in there and it just started working. So let's talk a little bit about um, responsive design with video. So if you, if you want to have like a really clean looking video on your YouTube, uh, from YouTube or from Vimeo or pretty much any of the video sites, um, if you install this plugin, um, it's called the uh, Fluid Video Embeds. What it does is it does, a, it's an additional call out to YouTube or any of these other sites, figuring out what the actual resolution is of the video. And what's nice about it is as you grow and shrink the page, it actually makes it so that it's going to have the correct aspect ratio no matter what, including the chrome that's on the bottom of the video or any of the other elements that are on the video um, embed. So I love being able to just take a video and stick it on to my WordPress site. But what I really like to be able to do is customize that video's location using something like advanced custom fields. Now, hopefully this doesn't go you know, above everyone's head here when regarding advanced custom fields, but what it allows you to do is to collect data from the, the person that's writing the blog post, take that data, and then display it someplace else on the page, not just where the content is, but someplace else on the page. So if you wanted to have a, a nice looking page that has a video in one area, a Twitter stream in another area and something else, and it relates all to that same topic, um, you could use uh, O-Embed with advanced custom fields. And there's other, comp there's other plugins that do custom field type work, but the one I like is advanced custom fields. 
So let's kind of go through a little bit of advanced, how advanced custom fields works in relation to using L-Embed. So this is, the, uh, this is the website that has an O-Embed code that I'm going to go and copy the URL and paste it into my SoundCloud link area. And then I'm going to go and copy my YouTube video URL. And I'm going to paste that into another area in my um, advanced custom fields post. Now what I can do is look at my video on my, on my WordPress site and be able to see both the video as well as the audio be displayed on there. Yes. Uh, this is, um, hmm, I guess it'd work with both. Yep. So then you can be able to listen to the audio as well as watch the video and have those be displayed on there. I can make it look real fancy by having, a, you know, an area for my my actual normal content area, and then up above is some uh, video as well as um, audio links that are being displayed on there. What's nice about that, I work at a church, so we deal with a lot of um, both video as well as audio type stuff, and we want to be able to display those um, on the same page. So being able to do something like this makes it so I can have a nice clean little player, a video box, and maybe some other boxes that are collecting the data that, that we're going to be posting to and be able to have that be displayed onto the site, but in a nice, clean, orderly fashion, while still having the whole area for your content to be on there and not having any of that be disrupted. So instead of having all that stuff in just the content area, now you can also have it in other parts of the page, too. So this is, um, I'm going to kind of go through how I built my advanced custom fields and how it gets displayed onto the site. This is the advanced custom fields. I go down to the field menu and I open up the custom fields. And then inside the custom fields, I've created an area there that's just for media. And I'm going to show you those fields that I'm collecting the data on. So I have two fields, one that's for YouTube as well as one for um, SoundCloud. There's my field name that I'm going to be referencing later in this, this talk. <laughs> And then in YouTube, I'm also collecting a, a really obscure video URL, a video uh, field name. Those field names are what's going to be referenced in my um, in my template for uh, that page template. So looking at advanced custom fields, and this is kind of a, a, a more simplified version of what I'm doing here, is I have I have an embed that I'm pulling in using, I have an embed that I'm pulling in using the git field uh, function that's part of advanced custom fields. And I'm pulling in the, the, I, the, the variable there, which is underscore GMP uh, video URI. And then I'm going to be using a function called uh, run shortcode and putting in my embed code in there. What's, what's nice about this is it lets me be able to display exactly where I want it to ha have be displayed onto the page and not having to worry about it being part of the content. I'm actually having it be displayed using the template. So I'm kind of concentrating um, on both audio and video here just to kind of show you the two different ways in which you can do this. So this is, um, these are the different options in which you get from SoundCloud when you're using an, a custom, um, custom O embed. So if you wanted to customize some additional features in there, such as like show user, show the play count, um, hide related, any of those sorts of things, these are things that are like elements that are with, that are on um, a SoundCloud embed. So by doing that, I can then use this code to set those parameters up before it gets displayed onto the site. So let's talk a little bit about, hmm, I missed a spot here. here. Okay. So yeah, so the, that's, the, uh, that's the way in which you do this. And I have some URLs here for um, where to find this type of information on the various uh, sites that you would be doing these types of embed codes on. So it's down on the bottom there. Check those out later. 
So let's talk a little bit about, um, so we've talked about how to embed other people's content onto your site. Now let's talk about taking your content on your site and embedding it on somebody else's site. So let's say you wrote a really uh, prolific post or you have a video or you have an audio or something that's on your site and you want to make that be displayed on um, someone else's site and you want to make it so it's going to look nice and clean and easy for them to be able to see. Um, WordPress uh, added the functionality to allow you to take, um, somebody else could take the URL for your post and then put it onto theirs, like reference it just like you would the YouTube video that we were talking about earlier and it would automatically display some type of content, either a title or a featured image or excerpt or something like that. So back in uh, WordPress 4.4, they added a couple, um, couple functions to be able to do this. And um, we'll kind of go through how those work in just a moment. Um, they also went and added uh, two additional hooks to it um, back in 4.4 to be able to modify the head and the footer, which is the top and the bottom of that embedded content. Um, then they've also made it so that when you make that embedded content show up on your site, um, you have some kind of, or on somebody else's site, you'll be able to have a, um, a way to customize that using uh, custom templates, um, page templates. So on the left-hand side are the custom page templates, and you can copy these from the WP includes slash theme dash compat folder. You copy these and put these into your own theme or a child theme that you built off of some, some other theme. You'll be able to use those to kind of customize the base part of um, that O embed. On the right-hand side is if you're doing any type of um, custom post types. Um, you can modify those. So for instance, on WP Water Cooler, we have a video custom post type. That video custom post type is what displays the post using a very specific look and feel. Um, you can also set up the embed for that particular element and have that be displayed using the correct post type. So let's kind of go through what that means. So this is from the codex, uh, WordPress codex, uh, make.wordpress.org. And you can go and see on the top here uh, in orange, that's the actual embed content itself. It's the whole wrapper around the whole thing. Then in the middle is the content, or rather the excerpt um, for that. Then you have a little share button over on the far right-hand side. And in the far left-hand side, you have the title of your site. And then everything in blue is that exact embed that's gonna be displayed on there. So if I were to take this particular URL and put it onto my site, just put it in there with nothing else around it, and then uh, save the post, it'll transform it into looking like this. So I wanted to show you some of the files that I created for my advanced, uh, for my uh, custom post type, for the video custom post type. So on the far right hand side, I have two different additional files that I added in, which is the embed-video content and embed-video. These are the two files that I created so that way we can customize that look and feel. And then here's a, you know, a really great screenshot of code, which is always like the best thing, right? <laughs> so I, um, I, I zoomed it up a little bit here so we can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here. So same type of concept here. I'm taking um, a advanced custom field, which is that underscore GP video URI, and we're pulling that in, which is that's a place that we've collected um, the video URL for that particular YouTube video. And then we have a couple of the, the next line down below that, um, setting a global variable, or and then below that, um, or actually being you know, able to access a global variable. Then below that is echoing that short code that's gonna say, you know, give me a width of 100% and here's my YouTube video and have that be displayed. So what does that mean? So this is, this is the, the, the embed that I wanted to have when somebody takes my video and, or takes my URL from my site and wants to display it on their site. Um, if you were to take this URL, uh, wpwarecore.com slash video slash and then the rest of the, the slug there, that URL would be displaying this particular piece of content. Now, if you want to test this yourself, take any website that any URL that you have on your website 
and then type in slash embed, that will display this. The only thing different is, is if you don't have you know, a customization set up to allow for the video player box to show up, you won't see that. But you'll see you know, a featured image or whatever type of uh, content you're going to put on there. Yes. Yeah, so if their site will support um, doing O embeds, um, your site would become the provider for the O embed uh, to show up on their site. So it's just like acting like a YouTube or acting like a Twitter or any of those sorts of things. Yep. So this is the, the, this is the way in which it gets displayed um, on my site. So if I go and take the, take the uh, URL that we were talking about regarding this particular post, it'll show this. So I'll have my, you know, the, everything else is just my normal website. But where the black part is in this little part down here, that's the content that's being displayed on the site. So it's almost just like if you were to put, um, uh, you know, like a YouTube video or something like that onto, onto there. Uh, let's see here. Go back real quick. So to kind of go back to this, if you had just a normal, normal, um, normal blog post, you'd end up with the title, which is right above the, the red, and then you'd have that excerpt. So if you have a post that you want to have a lot of content showing up there, you could make some changes to the, some using some hooks and filters to kind of change the way this is being displayed using that the excerpt embed. So if you wanted to have a long post show up there, or if you wanted to have a featured image, or any of that sort of thing. You can use that to display this. It's kind of what I ended up doing back here. So this content that's being displayed here, you can see that the class wp-embed content, that whole div that's right there is what's going to be displayed in that O embed when it gets displayed on somebody else's site. So you can make this customization however you like. I just chose to have video show up there since the, you know, the main reason why somebody would want to share my content would be for you know, the video, not for the, the text. So let's see here. Um, if you're somebody who's antisocial and you don't want to share your content, um, you can actually use uh, this, this really great plugin called Disable Embeds. And it'll actually make it so that your site won't allow for it to be shared. So if uh, somebody goes and copies URL and just puts it onto the site, it'll just be that URL. It won't actually turn into an actual embed. So like I said, if you want to control that, you can do this. Um, don't do that because, you know, the whole point of this is to have your stuff show up and have it look nice and clean and easy. Is there any questions regarding O embeds or in the way in which we kind of went about this? Maybe I can kind of rewind a little bit and explain it. Uh-huh. Yeah, so if you Yeah, so if you if you were to take the take any of the URLs on your WordPress powered site and put in slash embed, you'll end up with what looks like the embedded content that I was showing you earlier. Correct. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So your, your site is acting like YouTube in a way. Yeah, so being, being able to make those customizations um, uh, is great because if you think that the font's too big or it's too small or any of that sort of stuff, you can make changes to CSS that are part of this that will customize that look and feel. So if the font's too large or you want the color to be different or you want the background to be different, I chose it to have a black background. You can do any of those sorts of things and be able to have it, you know, displayed on somebody else's site. So it's almost like you're preparing it to look the way you want it to look. Um, I also chose to put a little bit of like an advertisement type thing on the bottom here, being able to, uh, come on, uh, being able to have, you know, water coolers on this day and that's on this and that. So that's a whole extra little piece that I put in there that isn't part of the post, it's just text that I wanted to have be displayed. So anytime anyone embeds any of my content, they'll get that content as well as the black background, the white text, all that sort of thing. Yes, sir? 
Yeah, on your yeah, it's just like as if it's being displayed on your site. So what it's doing is making an iframe that, of that piece of content, but it's going to be using slash embed at the end of it to be able to display it. Which also means you want to worry about responsive design in there okay. as well, because if um, if you're not setting it up correctly, you'll end up with content like this where it's being cut off on the side because the embed is too small. So there's there's different ways of customizing that depending on how you set it up in your CSS, so that way it gets displayed on their site the way that you're intending it to. Yes, sir. Yeah. So let's go back to that real quick. Yeah, so this, um, this is where I, I'm, I'm collecting the information for the URL using the um, advanced custom fields, so kind of where the, the line is in the, in the uh, screen there. Um, down below it, I'm echoing out what the embed's going to look like. That's where the oembed-get or underscore get is. That's actually displaying what that embed's going to look like on the site. No, but you're using the URL to, to take care of it. So by having uh, the wp underscore oembed get, it's just like putting in the, the URL into your post. But being able to do this, what's nice about this is, um, especially at the church that I work at, is that we didn't want this large graphic to show up above the play bar or any of that stuff. So you can actually go in there and say, um, I don't want the visual to be turned on. So visual equals false. That actually turns off, I don't know if I have it on the right there, but visual dash, uh, Visual is false actually makes it so that that album art won't show up. So if you have like a band or something like that, it'd probably be great to have the album art show up. But if you, you know, if you have something where it's the exact same content over and over again, you have this long list of videos or audio or something, it'd get really annoying really fast and you'll end up with this, you know, weird content set up there. Yes, sir. Um, so the question was, if, if he has audio that he's putting onto YouTube and you want to be able to have just the audio be, dis be displayed uh, onto <laughs> the site, not, not displayed, yeah, I guess what you could do is shrink down the player so it'd be really small, uh, and then the, the Chrome, which is the, you know, the actual uh, uh, controls and stuff would still be there, so you could do something I like see. that maybe. Or if you have static content that's being displayed on the video, where the audio is playing, maybe you want to have a larger size, you know, uh, video player there. It's up to you, I guess. Right. Yeah, because YouTube actually has the same type of setup where you can make some changes to it. You can force it to be HTML5 or you can force it to be this. There's all these different ways you can make those changes. But yeah, that, that would um, this type of thing would be the exact type of setup. So in the back. Um, there's probably... Uh, Four or five times more of that. Yeah, I just wanted to just wanted to kind of give you a, a more concise setup. Yeah, yeah. What, what's right? Exactly. What's neat about this is it's almost like when you're setting up an O embed, or sorry, an embed code. If you go on to SoundCloud and you customize the mini player, you could then look at the embed code and figure out which variables are being set up, you know, those values are being set up, and then you can just lay them out like this, so that way they'll be presented that way, and then you're consistent every single time. So instead of having to 
configure that embed code on SoundCloud's site, you're just getting the URL, putting it in there, and all the rest of it's already kind of pre-configured. Which is great for people that are building uh, custom themes or if they're gonna be working with users that have no business doing any of those changes, you're just like, go collect the video URL and put it in there and you're done. And that's, that's a great way to go about it. Sir. Um, you would see that if you went on SoundCloud site, like the, the link here, the developers.soundcloud.com, they have that. Oh, okay. So, so like this particular, like this particular piece of, con of code is being used in the, um, in that posts, the, in the post, uh, .php file, that exact, you know. They add and remove them, but yes, they do. So if I want to add more, oh yeah, yeah. There's um, there's a so the question was is if he wanted to um, add additional um, uh, O embed providers, how would you go about that? So there's a plugin that will do that for you. Um, the also if you in Jetpack, there's a, a way of turning on uh, doing additional O embeds that aren't normally supported in WordPress. That they've kind of gone out and sourced them so and figured them out. Them? You wouldn't have to code any of those, yeah. If you wanted to, like if somebody came up with some, you know, uh, video streaming site or some whatever, um, you could then go and make sure that on their end, they need to provide, you know, have their site set up in, a, in, a, in the correct way to be able to say, here's what happens when their site connects to your site or vice versa to get the correct JSON response back with all of the different fields there. They would need to set that up on their end. So if, if they've set it up and WordPress just doesn't support it yet, then be a good WordPress citizen and build that, make it a plugin, and then make it available for people to use. In the back? Sure, um, yeah, uh, RSS would totally do that. So you could use an RSS feed to grab all of the uh, URLs for every single one of those posts that are on the site, and then be able to take that RSS feed, uh, parse it out, and then have use something like Feed WordPress or one of those types of one of those types of plugins that will just take that content and push it into and build blog posts for you. Yeah, so um, if you're using like, for instance, like Feed WordPress or one of those one of those types of aggregating um, uh, plugins, what you could do is in that content you could just say embed this, you know, in the content of the post, embed it. You could either use uh, like uh, square brackets around it with the word embed, or you could just put it in there um, just as normal text. And as long as there's a separation between like a carriage return on the top and bottom of it or something it'll make it turn into an embed code automatically, so you won't have to do any of that. So that would be the way you would go about it if you wanted to ingest all of my content from Big Water Cooler and then post it onto your site, then you could do it using something like that. Does that answer your question, or? Sort of, I mean, again, I, I can imagine, say, like, I don't know, I'm running, you're running Water Cooler, yeah. and I'm running a competing channel, or a, a sister channel to yours. Yep. Right. So yeah. I guess, I guess RSS might, and using RSS to parse through like the post may accomplish the same thing, but it may not be necessarily the simplest way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the you would you're, you're what you're pretty much doing is just ingesting that content and being and having it turn into blog posts that you would want to have uh, tags or something that would make them relate or something like that. But yeah, you you could you could do something uh, something like that using Feed WordPress or one of those types of uh, plugins. Sir, you had a question? So, no, no, let's say I wanted to take your URL and put it on my site and not have it show up as an O embed and just be raw. Here's the HTML link and show. Yeah. How can I turn that off? Yeah, you can. And so, what, and what, what does that look like? Yeah, so the way you do it is uh, just like, just like a, a normal image, um, the, the, embed code, the embed will show up, you know, the, it's visual representation of it. 
Uh, if you move your mouse on top of it, there'll be a little a little uh, X button on there, and you can turn that off. Yeah. Just like with YouTube, if you wanted to have the YouTube URL show up or something like that, you could do the same type of thing. Yeah, you could, there's, you could do, uh, right, you would want to look at, like, the content filter, and then turn off, you know, what, all of that kind of O-embed awesomeness, yeah, yeah, that would be the way you do it, is to filter out the content before it gets displayed onto the site, so, like, something in your functions at PHP, you would just, want, it's literally like a one-liner that would kind of take care of that. Any other questions? Alrighty. I may have I may have uh, ended early. Let's see here. So get down to my title card here. Yeah, five ah, awesome. So um, I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me on Twitter, Jason Tucker. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to um, ask me those there. Um, these particular slides will be available over on uh, their website. So feel free to go take a look at that and uh, go from there. Um, I also do some shows, WP Water Cooler, and a few other things, so feel free to go take a look at those, too. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, Roy is always... <laughs> yeah, go over to Hi Roy and go, uh, go say hi to that dude. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, um, that's it for... That's, that's all I got. Thank you.